All right, my name is Madison McKibben. Welcome. And you're probably asking yourself two questions. Yes, this is a bowl of chowder. And yes, I am here to tell you what's going on in the Olympic race for beach volleyball. What happened in Doha, where the point spread is, and what's gonna happen in the next five tournaments leading up to the Olympics, starting off with the Mortal Kombat of beach volleyball that is happening in Cancun in just a few days. Three tournaments in 17 days. It's gonna be crazy. This is the closest, most exhilarating US Olympic qualification for beach volleyball in the history of the sport. Now, I can't 100% accurately say that because my intern in charge of research, Riley, said to me, and I quote, I won't do it. That being said, this race is damn close. So I'm gonna give you a quick recap of what happened in Doha. Even though I was a month ago, that still matters right now. All right, we're gonna start off with the men, Jake and Taylor. Jake and Taylor actually beat Stoyanovsky and Krasilnikov from Russia, which is the number two team in the world in the quarterfinals. They made it all the way to the semis to lose, but they played off for third place against Nick and Phil. They beat Nick and Phil 21-9, 23-21. That third place finish gave them 640 points. So they dropped their lowest score of 320, increasing their total points by another 320. Simple math and they went from eighth in the world to being tied for seventh in the world. They still remain the number one team for the United States, and the point differential between them and the second US team is now at 600 points. On to Nick and Phil. Like I said, they made it to the semis, lost in third place, but they got fourth, and they scored 560 points. Now the thing with Nick and Phil though, is that was their 12th total tournament, so they don't have to drop their lowest score. They got to add 560 points to their total, so that made them leapfrog from 17th place all the way to 13th place. And Try and Trevor were the second team for the US before this tournament, but now Nick and Phil have just leapfrogged them, taking that second spot. But they're only beating Try and Trevor by 40 points, so it's super close. Briefly, I'll mention Try and Trevor. Uh, they had to play on the country quota, so they actually didn't make it into Doha, uh, but I will give you more information on that coming up in my further segment. Moving on to the women, I'm gonna start with April Ross and Alex Kleiman, who had a phenomenal tournament. They won the whole thing. But how they got there, they ended up playing Kalinske and Stockman in the semis, beating them 21-15, 21-16. Then they moved on to the finals, playing against their arch nemesis, Melissa Humana Paredes and Sarah Pavin from Canada, the number one team in the world before this tournament. The only reason why I call them the nemes their nemesis is because from 2018, they played each other 13 different times in FIVB and AVP tournaments, all of which have been in finals, semis, or quarters. So the ongoing record is Alex and April have eight wins, Sarah and Melissa have five, and they've played each other in seven different finals. Now, previous to this, it was tied three to three when it came to final wins, but this was the tiebreaker. This was the defining match. April and Alex have four wins. Melissa and Sarah have three. On to the next women's team, Kalinske and Stockman. Like I said, they did make it to the semifinals. What's incredible is that they were the 14th seeded team in the tournament. If you didn't hear me right, the 14th seeded team in the tournament. And they made it to the semis. The other teams that made it to the semis and finals were the one seed, the two seed, and the three seed. Pretty impressive. Unfortunately, they lost in the bronze medal match to the fourth best team in the world, Agatha and Duda from Brazil, but they were able to increase their points by 240, closing that margin between the second and third place teams for the US on the women's side. On to the next US women's team, Sarah Sponsel and Kelly Clays. And one thing I want you guys to know is they're the youngest team out of the top 15 teams in the world competing for an Olympic bid. It's pretty incredible. So also what's pretty incredible is they were the only US team that went through the country quota, the qualifier. In pool play, they almost won their pool against Melissa and Sarah Pavin, who ended up getting second. Like they almost won their pool. They took them to three. I think they beat them. They lost 16 to 14. And unfortunately, they met up against Agatha and Duda, who took down Stockman and Larson for third place. They met them in the quarterfinals and they lost, but they ended up getting a fifth. And a fifth place was exactly 
what they needed to get. It was the lowest place they needed to get in order to drop their lowest score and increase their points. So with that fifth place finish, they increased their points by 80 points and closed the margin between the second place team in the US, Carey and Brooke Sweat, to now just 240 points. And finally, Kerry Walsh Jennings and Brooke Sweat, and they came out swinging. They actually almost beat April and Alex to win their pool. It went to three, they lost 15 to 10, but it was a nail biter. And unfortunately for them, they went up against Stockman and Larson in the round of 16 and lost, and they finished with a ninth. With the ninth place, they got 400 points, but that is the same equivalent to their lowest score out of their top 12 finishes. So they were the only US team not to increase in points. However, they still remain the second place team in the US. So now there's five tournaments left, three of which are happening in a bubble in Cancun starting this week. And the schedule of those events are literally back to back to back. So for example, if you have to play in the country quota and you make it all the way to the finals, the next country quota is the next day. And that repeats itself three times. So this is why I like to call the Mortal Kombat of beach volleyball or the Amazing Race of beach volleyball. It's gonna be a bloodbath. So one thing you should know is that Sponsling Clays and Try and Trevor are most likely gonna have to play in every single country quota. Now I say possibly because there is a chance that they could get into to the qualifier if teams drop out, but it's a very complicated process with entry points and all this stuff. So if you don't understand that, go and check out our last video. I explained it more. It's complicated. All right, like I said, Cancun is starting pretty much right now. And you can see most of the matches on Beach Volleyball World's YouTube channel. So to wrap it up, where the US teams stand in Olympic provisional rankings, April and Alex are number one for the US and number one in the world and have pretty much wrapped up that spot. So the three women's teams are fighting for one more spot. In second place is Carrie Walsh Jennings and Brooke Sweat. And the third place team for the US is Sarah Sponsel and Kelly Clays. Carrie and Brooke are only ahead by 240 points, which is a very close margin. And then in fourth place is Stockman and Kalinski, and they're behind Sponsling Clays only by 400 points. So literally every single tournament is gonna matter and it could switch the order of who's second, who's third, who's fourth. It's gonna be crazy. Now on the men's side, like I said, Taylor and Jake are still the number one team for the US. And as I said earlier, if you're listening, Nick and Phil have just leapfrogged Try and Trevor for the second spot in the United States. Now the point differential between Jake and Taylor and Nick and Phil is 600 points. But the point differential between Nick and Phil and Try and Trevor is only 40 points. That is the smallest margin between any US team competing for the Olympics right now. And that is your Olympic update. And I hope you tune in. Uh, we need to cut this a little bit short because we're filming in our garage, which is our weight room, and my fiance needs to train someone. So we gotta wrap this up, Riley. Let's go. Good? All right. All right, you get the cameras.